In this repair video, we're going to continue working on the Gigabyte 4070 that we worked on a few days ago. And I had to put this on hold and I asked if somebody has the schematics board view diagram for this card. And somebody did send us a link so we can download the board view diagram for this card. Amazing. Thank you very much, Omnia Comp. That's really awesome of you. You make the world a better place. I downloaded the board view diagram. That's what I need the most. And I did thank him. Thank you. I'll check it out. And of course, just as I'm making a video. Somebody keeps calling me on WhatsApp. Let me answer. Hello. Hi, greetings, sir. Saw your YouTube video for the LG Ultrafine 5K. Yes. The USB C. Yes. I had the same issue. I want to get it like repaired by you. I can send the motherboard to you. Uh, how much would you charge for that? It's two hundred and ninety-five dollars. Uh, one ninety-five. Two ninety-five. Two ninety-five. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay, All gotcha. right. and I can just send you the motherboard? You can send the board only, yes. Okay, All right. okay, thank you. Take care, bye. Okay, so... The thing is, WhatsApp is personal. I do not use it for business. But if you look at my WhatsApp number... Look. I cannot possibly respond to every single person and it's not a system to track tickets or to answer questions. Sometimes people get mad. I sent you a message on WhatsApp. I do not check WhatsApp. Whoever said that we use WhatsApp for support? Since when? I use it for family. I do not use it for business. He could have sent an email and we would have responded to him with the quote. Easy. Same exact thing like I just did over the phone. I give him the price and it's done. Only takes two seconds. Before we start the video, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a China Shenzhen based PCB manufacturer and printed circuit board assembler with more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication. They offer a wide variety of services, including 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and much more. PCBWay is committed to meeting all your PCB needs. They offer quality on time delivery and competitive pricing. One to two layer boards starts at $5 with 24 hours turnaround. Get an instant quote by visiting PCBWay.com or click on the link below and make sure to check them out. Every email that you send over to us, it takes about 24 hours for us to get back to you because you're not the only person who is sending the email. Dolly is the one who responds to all emails and she's pretty good at responding to emails, usually within 24 hours. Now, if you send me a message and you tell me why aren't you responding and you're sending the message on WhatsApp, it's because you are sending the message to the wrong place. You either need to use the contact us form on the website or reply to your ticket. If you already created one, just reply to the ticket and Dolly will get back to you within 24 hours. Easy. If you want to leave a comment on YouTube, what's going on with my ticket number, so on and so forth, I placed an order, what's going on, and you leave that comment on YouTube, you're not going to get a response because YouTube is not monitored for support. Let me remind you what's going on with this card. The customer mailed this card over and he said that he wants to know the exact component that failed on this card. We made some fun about that customer, him asking the exact component that failed on the card because he has two other cards, two similar other cards with the same issue. Anyway, you can watch part one. We measured all the voltage rails on the board. Of course, we did visual inspection first. Everything passed as far as the visual inspection goes. Then we measured the 12 volt lines. We had 12 volts. We had five volts, packs, memory, and when we came down to the 1.8 volt line, we were reading 1.2 instead of 1.8. And I did mention in the last video that we need a board view diagram, schematics, 
so we can troubleshoot and see why we have 1.2 and not 1.8. I started by replacing the GS9212 chip and we still have the same, 1.2 volts. Now if I power the card on and we measure, we get 1.2 volts. PAX does read 0.9 volts. It does have the right reading. Everything on the board is measuring good as far as the voltage goes. But we only have a problem with 1.8 being 1.2. This coil is connecting directly to the GPU core. 1.2 appears to be normal if the GPU is not properly communicating. If there is a problem with the core, then we're going to have 1.2 volts. And I concluded that based on the board view diagram. Let me show you. I do not want to leave you hanging, so I thought even if this video is short, I'm still going to go over it. So you can see how I came to the conclusion that we have a problem with the core. Whether that core needs reballing or it's a faulty core, it doesn't matter. Same result. Now, a lot of you in the comments, they said to check the feedback resistors for GS9219. If we go down here where we change that chip, again, you can look at part one. We replace this chip in hopes that maybe we can get 1.8 instead of 1.2, but we still have 1.2. Now, a lot of you said to check the resistors around the chip. Make sure we do not have one that is blown, not blown, but open. Resistors, they open, they do not short. So if we have a resistor that's supposed to be 10K and we read 5K, that's a good resistor. Resistors, they open, they do not short. So if we read a lower reading, that's okay. A higher reading is not good. I did go over all the resistors before I started recording. I went over every single resistor that you see here. And all of them are reading good, except for this one. This is supposed to read 10K. It was reading 5K, but lower is okay. I'm measuring that resistor in circuit. So 5K reading is okay, as long as it's not 20K or 30K or 100K or one mega ohm. And one other resistor was reading 5K instead of 10. I think this one here, that's fine. 5K reading in circuit is okay. No issues with any of the resistors, not on this side of the board and not on back side of the board. I measured every resistor on that board that deals with the 1.8 volt line. Now, if we look here, we click on the inductor. We see that this side is labeled as 1.8, 1.2, both. And this side is labeled as 1.8 phase. If you check pin two of the inductor, let me zoom out. Pin two of the inductor is connecting directly with the core. It's making a connection here. And pin number one of the inductor is connecting with GS9212 and other stuff. If we flip the board, we also have some connections on the back. I measured every resistor, I measured every connection, and everything is measuring good. Now, if we measure PAX, usually PAX is between 4 to 9 ohms, but we are reading 37 ohms on PAX. That's one thing to note also. Even though PAX is reading 0 0.9 volts when we power the GPU on, in ohms mode, we are reading 38 ohms, and that's way too high. What's causing PAX to be high in resistance? I went ahead and checked every resistor on that line based on the board view diagram. Let me quickly go to the board view diagram and show you what I mean. We're gonna flip the board again. I mean, I did all that work for you already, so we do not waste a lot of time in this video. I do not wanna pretend like we're gonna measure every resistor in this video and waste more time. So where is PAX? Right here. That's PAX, okay? So I measured everything that connects with PAX, top and bottom, every yellow component that you see I measured, and you can see that PAX connects directly with the core also. Flip the board. I measured whatever I could from back of the board and everything is in check. So right now, 
the fault is pointing to the core. B and that PAX is high. It's connecting directly with core. 1.8 is reading 1.2, and it's connecting directly with core. We're going to blame it on core. I measured everything that I possibly could. And, and now we can tell the customer the exact component that failed on this card. That's it. Short video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Again, thank you for Omnia.com for the board view. It helped a lot. And that's why I was able to create part two of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.